Is this all about not as bad as feared? Is it about the services number, which is also pretty strong? Other data they gave, 5% uh, is a pretty nice bump. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm a little bit surprised by it. We've seen a lot of technology companies have bounces like this, particularly semiconductors and cyclical type of companies. So it implies to me that, that people think the worst is over. Uh, but I think the, 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 the focus over the next several months might start moving to what's the next product cycle going to be. And at this point, we don't really know anything compelling coming out later this year. So it's a little harder for me to make a cyclical call uh, on the stock here, given how much numbers have come down. We're, our numbers compared to two months ago are down 16%, stocks up a few percent. So we've seen a, a real gap in valuation and fundamentals, which makes me a little bit more concerned right now. So David, what's the new investor thesis for Apple? If you believe in it, if you're long it now, is it still about the iPhone? Is it more about services? Is it, is it just consistency? Uh, I think uh, consistency and certainly services. Uh, step back and think about where we were when the stock was up in uh, the 230s and it declined dramatically, John down to 140. We, we, we've had a significant reset of earnings expectations. It looks like the numbers right now for, for uh, fiscal 2019 is about 11 and a half, um, maybe 13 bucks a share in, in, in 2020. But I think what we haven't reset are street expectations. I think I'll take the other side of, uh, of, the, of the debate with, with, with your other guests. I, I don't think street expectations have been fully reset. If we don't have any more earnings um, cuts and we start focusing on that 13 number as we get through the balance of this year, uh, no more cuts. Um, right now the stock's at 162. That's about 12 and a half times 2020. That's not, in, that's not taking into consideration the cash. I think the stock slowly moves higher as street expectations come around that the stock is still cheap and we've had a significant reset. So we're, we're bullish and we expect a higher stock price through the year. Tim, the company is cutting prices on iPhones outside of the U.S. due to the stronger dollar, repricing yeah. in local currencies. What seems unclear to me right now is whether you see that begin to push through to services and the prices on services. If that happens, what does it do to the shifting narrative towards the growth in that business? Yeah, it's a very, it's very complex math here because uh, on the one hand, the services were a little weaker on a growth standpoint than most expected, largely because there is a component that you need new device sales. So obviously there's a price elasticity issue here. So the company at some point is going to need to lower pricing. But Hanson stocks, I've covered Hanson stocks for over 20 years, they're very sensitive to that gross margin line. So the, the gross margin guidance into March below 38 is kind of a psychological level. Um, now whether or not they cut it on services, we'll see, but there's certainly other pressures on services where some of the app developers uh, and, and content providers are trying to bypass the iPhone in the in the process to, to avoid that payment. So there are certainly a lot of different pressures on, on that services line other than just new phone purchases. I mean, we've asked this question so many times about whether Apple should be valued as a services company, but now that we saw the profit margin and the continued growth dis despite the iPhone decline, does Apple deserve a different valuation on the, on the services business to be valued more like other services competitors? Well, I think, look, it's, it's still 15% of revenue, so it's a small percent. I cover 20 some odd hardware companies, and that's the lowest percentage of any company that I cover, Cisco and others. So it is a component. It's growing faster than those others. So I do get that. But that's been happening over the last uh, two or three years, and still gross margins have come down, operating margins have come down. So despite that positive it's just not factor, a big enough piece of the business? It's not big enough, and it's not like I, I personally would not do a sum of the parts valuation because they're not going to uh, strip that really. out and sell it. So it's harder for me. So it, I think it's a nice thing to have, the wearables. So they have some good growth businesses, but they add up to 25% of total revenue. So unfortunately, people want this to be more than an iPhone story, but I think ultimately it still is. Very much so. And David, it seems to me like the number we really want from Apple on services is paid accounts, right? Uh, right. They talked a bit about paid accounts, but they keep giving us this overall active device number, even active iPhones, 900 million is an impressive number, but just because I get a new Apple device doesn't mean all of a sudden I'm going to start paying for more services. If I already have five or six Apple devices in my home, right? Don't we care about just how many individual paying accounts there are to measure services growth? 
Oh yeah, sure. And again, it's a, it's a portfolio of services. Um, when you start thinking about um, all the subscriptions that uh, Apple users and, and other device users on their TVs are subscribing to, it's starting to add up. And Apple needs to get in the game, I think, even a little bit more, particularly on the video streaming. You start looking at these individual uh, subscriptions, and all of a sudden, you've created your own bundle. And at, at some point, we're, and we've already seen it, that we're gonna, some of these uh, services have to compete more on price. And so, uh, yeah, I think that you make a very good point. Tim, Apple's still sitting on a mountain of cash right now, returning it to shareholders through buybacks and the like. Does that still make the most sense, or should they be putting that capital work and uh, capital to work in other ways, especially if they are looking to grow that services business? Yeah, the company's been unwilling to to make a large acquisition. They've they believed in developing th themselves. The, the, I think the narrative at some point yeah. needs to change here. So, uh, we've seen a lot of companies, particularly I cover some big hardware names that have a lot of cash that was offshore that have done big buybacks and it hasn't necessarily resulted in much if you look at the sh the the stock price of what apple bought back the last three quarters it's been very negative uh, for for use of that capital so if, if they're unable to invigorate on their own, I think, yeah, they could use a push, particularly but, on the content but side. But Tim, is there anything, even in retrospect, you can look at and say, boy, they really should have bought that. It would have helped their story. It would have helped margins. Isn't part of the problem, they're so profitable to begin with, anything that they buy is going to be dilutive to that. Yeah, it's going to be dilutive. Uh, I think ultimately they're going to need other legs to the stool. So I think ultimately it's, you know, they, they, they have it in services and in wearables, but they, they probably need a little bit more to move the needle uh, further. Finally, David, you're a shareholder in Apple. Anything in the numbers yesterday that would change your investment thesis? No, I don't think so. I, you know, expectations were so low. I think they hit the uh, trifecta. The, uh, it looks like the guidance was, you know, for the next quarter, 55 to 59 billion in revenue. I think there were some fears that there may have been a four handle on the lower end. A lot of boxes, positive boxes checked, in my opinion, on the services side. And, uh, and, and finally, the CFO himself said that there's uh, terrific value in Apple stock. And I hope that they, again, at these valuations, I would much rather them uh, buy back a lot of stock, give existing shareholders a bigger, bigger uh, relative piece of the pie. And I'm just leery uh, of a really big acquisition. I think, uh, that particularly in the technology space, it is littered with uh, big, sexy deals that were a disaster. I like their current strategy of buying back stock.